Well, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the other, first talk a little bit about the other soaps you worked on and then move on to your voiceover. Um, I, how was the experience? You know, it's so funny how, uh, with the pros, you can also see on YouTube scenes with you and Ken Schreiner, Mary Beth Evans from Rituals. How was the experience on that show? Oh, man, that was so great. Um, uh, I was a part of Rituals from the very beginning. Um, and actually, maybe a lot of people don't know that we did a pilot episode. And since it was being touted as the first syndicated nighttime soap opera, we went to the NAPTI convention and worked it very hard and um, succeeded in getting enough um, stations to buy into the show that it was going to be on the air. And when they came time to do that, they decided to scrap the whole pilot that we had done and go in a completely new uh, direction. And um, that's when they brought in Jorn Winther, and he took over heading the show. And I went from playing a college student to playing one of the teachers and had the great good fortune to have Ken Schreiner be my, my partner in Mike. We were a little bit, uh, see a little bit. Um, which was just a, a delightful way to go. And, yeah, there were so many people that came on the show, uh, you know, besides Mary Beth, uh, who was on the show. Uh, Kevin Spiritus was on that show, who went on to do Days, as well as, um, oh, my gosh, I'm just trying to think, uh, Gina Gallego, who did some guest shot things on Days a few years ago. And, wow. Um, yeah, just, oh, John Lindstrom was on the, he was my psychiatrist, mm. I think, for a while on the show. So, you know, it was, it was another continued springboard for so many people that were just getting started in the soap world and uh, some definite um, legends, uh, Monty Markham, Christine Jones, uh, Joanne Flug, Tina Louise, you know, all of those people were a part of the show. Wow. Well, and uh, moving on to another world where you played Donna Hudson, how was that? You know, I loved it. I really fought hard to uh, to get that role by the NBC casting directors that I was too young, that they knew my work from Days of Our Lives and Rituals, and I really fought. And I said, I will come in and audition for you. I know I am Donna. Please see me. And um, I did. I went in. Uh, here in Los Angeles to one of the heads of casting at, at NBC and I guess convinced him enough because the next thing I knew is that we had a call that they were flying me to New York to test for the show and um, I think it took them 10 days or more to make the decision because that is what they were concerned about that I looked too young. Um, chronologically, I was the right age but I had always played younger and they were feeling like that was the case, but I guess my audition or what won them over. And so for two, you know, a little over two glorious years, I got to, um, to bring my version of Donna to life. Um, I know that there were a lot of people out there who never really accepted me as Donna because of Anna Stewart's brilliant portrayal of her. But there were a lot of people who did embrace me and enjoy my Donna and I can just say I had a blast. I just thoroughly, thoroughly uh, enjoyed it, storylines that came along with it. And then from there, then you started to really uh, segue into voiceover work. How did you get into that? Um, well, I had al always done um, voiceovers, which, you know, um, I maybe people – understand or if you don't I mean there's so many different elements to voiceovers there's voiceover in radio commercials there's voiceover in television commercials there's original animation voiceover there's book narration voiceover there is anime voice voiceover which is dubbing you know they call it dubbing because the cartoon is already done, usually in a foreign language, and you're coming in and, and saying the words in English, and you have to make um, all of 
the English fit into the mouths that are already flapping, you know, on screen. Um, so there's so many different levels of it. I started out doing radio and TV commercials when I first got started. Um, I'm basically from Dallas originally, and uh, I picked an agent in Dallas who said, oh, I have a voiceover department. And I said, you do? And she said, yes. And I said, well, then I'm signing with you. And she taught me. And literally what it was, and this is how old I am and how long ago this was, um, I sat on a little stool, and she sat across from me next to a reel-to-reel recorder with a little microphone that I held, and she gave me radio copy, and I would practice it, and she would direct me and say, now do this, think about that, do this. And that's what got my voiceover career started. And then when I did the soap, I didn't have time um, because, again, voiceover is usually so fluid and so quick that if I was available for the audition, then because of the soap, I wasn't available for the job. Or if I was available for the job, I wasn't available for the audition. So kind of those years, I didn't do a lot of of, uh, voiceover. But then when I got off the soap, I started pursuing it again. And also what fell into my lap was um, uh, audiobook narration. And um, I won't go into all of that, because it's kind of a long story, but a wonderful one. But suffice it to say, by doing the narration, that led me to uh, producing and directing over 60 books on tape for, you know, um, uh, Romance Alive and uh, Audio Renaissance and even HarperCollins. And then during that time, um, I was blessed to have Jack Kirby, of famous cartoon, or I'm uh, sorry, uh, comics fame, who created the Silver Surfer, Surfer and Captain America, Incredible Hulk, all those wonderful characters as a friend. And I was at his birthday party, and I ended up talking to this gentleman for a while, and finally I said, what do you do? And he said, well, I'm head of New World Entertainment, and uh, we're getting ready to uh, do a remake of the Incredible Hulk cartoon series. And I said, wow, oh, that's amazing. I do animation. And truthfully, I had never done animation. But um, I believed in myself and my skills. And he said, do you have an animation tape? And I said, oh, you know what? I'm working on it, but I have a commercial tape. And he said, well, I'd love to listen to it. So Uh, I got it to him, he listened to it, and he was good to his word, and he brought me in, and, um, you know, the rest is history. I became uh, Betty Ross on The Incredible Hulk, and that was my first animation series, and then um, the second year, uh, Jamie Simone for Savan took over um, the show, and uh, by meeting him, it led him to recommending me for Digimon uh, to play Mimi, which I auditioned for and got, and that was my first anime dubbing. I had never done that before, but I had dubbed myself, you know, in some of these, like you mentioned, the television shows that I had done, you know, sometimes audio or sound is bad and you've got to go in later and, you know, revoice. a a section and you have to match your lips and everything. So I thought, well, I can do that. And sure enough, I was kind of on the job learning, but I caught on very quickly. And the directors I worked with led to um, giving me other opportunities and telling other people about me to audition. And my voiceover career just started, um, you know, skyrocketing from there and also through my agent and, you know, getting more original animation as well as um, the anime. And so it's just been a sheer delight because um, here I don't have to rely on my looks or my age. You know, I can be that five-year-old uh little kid or that 95 year old old lady and it's just such a delight to be able to um, encompass all of those roles and those attitudes and bring those characters and tell the truth of those characters 